Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Jason, and today I want to do something a little bit different. I am going to be talking to you guys today about some of the stuff that I use and that I've used over the years that has made my camping easier. Now, this isn't to say that this is an essentials list. I will come up with a playlist of some essentials out there. Some of this stuff on the list I might consider an essential for me because I don't go camping without this stuff. But to each his own, some of you guys will find this stuff to be just something that makes it a little bit easier. So I have a plethora of stuff here that you guys can check out. I will drop the links below. I would appreciate it if you guys like this video and subscribe. Really would mean a lot to me. Thanks so much. Let's get started. So the first thing on this list is going to be a proper mattress. So over the years, I've hammock camped. I've cowboy camped. Just slept in a ditch before in a sleeping bag. It is doable and um, you can get a good night's sleep. Or if you really want to make camping easier and more enjoyable, I would definitely recommend getting yourself a nice upgraded mattress. Now by no means is this mattress a budget mattress of any sort. This is by far the most comfortable one I have ever had. I've had inflatable mattresses. I've had foam, memory foam mattresses. Um, this is by far the best one. Not only is it the best camping mattress I've ever had, it is by far the best mattress in general I've ever had. Way more comfortable than even my thick pillow top mattress at home. I really do like these because I can put these up inside of my tent at night to add a little bit extra comfort when I'm in there. Or what I will be doing in the future is getting a topper and building some sort of bed platform to put this on and sleeping directly on this. So this thing is super thick and very much the softest mattress I've ever had. And I really do like that it packs down fairly small for the amount of mattress that you're getting. This is the Hest Foamy Wide. It is 30 inches by I believe 75 or 78 in length, which is um, the exact length of my bed. I have the six and a half foot bed. So I'll have a nice little protected soft sleeping area when I'm out camping inside of my topper. Again, you can also use this in your rooftop tent. I do that on occasion. It adds a lot more comfort. So I would definitely recommend upgrading your mattress or just getting a mattress in general if you don't have one already. So the reason I recommend specifically the Hest one, because this side is gonna be resistant to elements and the other side is gonna be super soft while also having a very high R rating that is gonna be kind of your insulation when it's cold or it's super hot outside. That is gonna be your insulation layer. And it is also resistant to low temperatures, whereas some memory foam mattresses are gonna be super compressed and not really go back to their shape, especially in the cold weather. All right, so the next thing on the list is gonna be kind of a twofer here. This is having a nice, easy kitchen setup. I've had a ton of different kitchen setups. I've had, you know, tables on top of drawers. I've had, um, my tailgate here. First of all, we're gonna talk about this Sylvan Sport here. This is a fold-out kitchen, and before I ended up trying it, I thought it was gonna be super complicated and annoying to open up, but realistically, all you have to do on this one is unzip two parts, pull it apart, lock the legs, and uh, you're basically ready to go right then and there. There's a few extra steps, but in reality, this is the easiest kitchen setup easiest table I've ever had and it also has a lot of storage built into the table portion of this setup. Now along with that I would recommend getting yourself an all-in-one system like this jet boil. I do have a video I'll try to put it up here or down below talking about this jet boil if you'd like to hear a little bit more but I do like that it has every single thing I need for a kitchen inside of this little container here. So essentially what comes with this is a lid with a strainer on it. You've got a pan here. So you've also got a five liter pot here, a two burner, 10,000 BTU stove, as well as a windscreen. Now again, this isn't something that I would consider budget by any means. It's definitely not an essential thing. This is just a thing that I've found that makes camping so, so much easier and uh, makes me want to go out even more because 
it's super easy, super compact, and uh, it's really fast at cooking my food. This is really cool because when you open it up, it does become about the same size as every other stove that I've ever had, um, maybe a little bit smaller even. But when it's folded up and packed away, it takes up hardly any space at all. And essentially knowing that I have my stove, my pot, my pan, my strainer, the fuel connect and everything all in this little tiny package just makes everything so, so much better. All right, so the next thing on the list is gonna be getting proper storage. So that can mean either getting yourself a container like this, getting some action packers from like Walmart or Target or whatever, or getting yourself a drawer system. Now, if you've been following the channel for a while, you know that I had a Forerunner with a drawer system in it, and that has been hands down my absolute favorite way to bring camping gear with me or just kind of have it ready and packed every single time I take off. However, this is a new build, and while I probably will be going to a drawer system in the future, I have not yet. So if you are looking for a drawer system in your vehicle, especially in a truck where it's open, you can look at Decked, you can look at SHW, and also Truck Vault. I'm sure there's some other ones out there. But if you want to keep using the rear of your vehicle or your truck bed, and you just want to go on the weekend and have something ready to go, I do really like these roam boxes. These are by far the most secure and um, just the most well-built ones that I've ever had. You certainly can go out there and get yourself, you know, an action packer. I do have one of those. Um, it's, it's held up relatively well. There's some, you know, dents and a little bit of cracking going on, but it's certainly cheaper than the roam boxes. If you do want to see a very in-depth review of my roam boxes, I have this one as well as a larger one. Um, I will drop a link down below to an article I wrote for Trail Tundra, and I will be writing articles for Trail Tundra in the future, so I'll try to drop links below when applicable. But the reason I really do like Rome is I think this is their strongest suit. Um, they have this larger one that has wheels on it, so you can wheel this around. They also have smaller boxes that will fit on your roof, so these do have actual hinges on them. I really do like that. Um, I also do like that there are seven different latches here, and they are all lockable. Typically what I do is this one kind of stays at my house. It has all of my camping gear ready to go, um, the little things like stoves, stuff like that that I need every single time. And then my bigger box stays at my storage facility, and I will grab that pretty much every time as well. But if I'm just going out for a little day trip or something like that, I've got this one at my house ready to go. So the next on the list is gonna be these Lone Rock Concepts. This is gonna be a water dispenser. All you're gonna do is hit that, and the water will crank, and same on here. Essentially, these just screw on to either your roto packs or your scepter or even one of those big blue boxes. I forgot the name of them, but they basically just go on there and um, while you're at camp, you can just have this sitting off the tailgate or sitting on one of your tables, something like that. And that way you don't have to unscrew this every single time. So I'm pretty new to the scepter. I got it just for um, testing this one out. I actually prefer the Scepter now to the actual Rotopacks here, but in the past it's been very annoying to have this hold up. So that is why I did end up getting this actual stand. This is also from Lone Rock as well, and it just sits kind of in there, and that way it's not going to fall over or anything like that. Now, when you travel, you just throw these in a little bag, and then when you get to camp, you'll screw them on. And there's no leaking or anything like that in these. I've been super happy with them. Um, I'm kind of annoyed that it took me this long to try these out. So like I said before, I will drop a link to everything I talk about in this video below. And uh, if you have the Scepter 10 liter like I have, or you have the traditional one, which is the 20 liter, this is really, really great for that. This only takes seconds to put on. It's pretty cheap and um, it makes everything so, so much easier, especially with the roto packs. I can't tell you how annoyed I am taking this on and off every single time I want to pull just a little bit of water out. You've got this that goes in there. Um, it is just so annoying. So if I had this sitting on a stand here, it takes up almost nothing. And then I just 
turn it on like that um, makes camping so much easier. It makes me more likely to drink when I need to, which is especially important when you're out in the backcountry or if you're out off-roading. Now I am fully aware that this one is going to be quite the controversial one, but I really don't care because this is the best way to make coffee or espresso at camp. The one thing that drives me nuts when I'm out camping with other people is the absolute rush that everyone tries to do in the morning to get out of there. Nobody wants to relax and chill. So what I usually end up doing is bringing something like this. So all I have to do is pop a little espresso pot in there, put a little bit of water on the top, and then just set it down. And then I can break down camp, get everything ready. And by the time this is done, I can just take a little shot of espresso, get my caffeine, avoid my caffeine dependent migraine, and I can um, you know, have everything ready. Now I'm someone that moves pretty slow in the morning, but I really still do love using this. I am a big espresso guy, but I obviously do love coffee. The coolest thing I will say about this is not only do you have the ability to have espresso when you're out camping and you don't have to make a big pot of coffee, chug it down, um, the coolest thing about this is that it is a self-contained unit. It heats the liquid up in here and it will make your espresso. Now, often my biggest scenario is let's say I'm out camping. I cooked the night before. I've already put up my stove. Most of the time in the morning for breakfast, I'm just gonna eat some yogurt or a bar or something like that. I don't wanna take my entire stove back out, reheat water and make myself coffee. So really all I'm gonna do is put water in here, put the little thing in there, set it down, and it heats the water up and makes the coffee. So you can also put coffee grinds in here and use that if you'd like. But if you wanna make it the easiest, then you can get a Nespresso pod and throw that in there. So for the most part, you would just put some water in here and let it heat it up. But if you have a lot of these to make and you have the Nespresso pods or your own coffee, you wanna boil some water and add it to this. So adding the boiling water to this is gonna make this usable a ton more. If you're gonna have it boil it on its own, this will last for, I believe, about four of them. And realistically, if I wanted to, I could make some lattes while I'm out, but I am a fancy camper. I'm just not that fancy of a camper. Now you can just let that cool and um, you're ready to go. The entire time I was out doing other stuff while that just made it on its own. So super easy. You got your espresso right there. If you bring some milk with you, you can mix it up. You can either use this as your cup or you can use this as like a uh, drip cup for afterwards, um, either way. I like to just go ahead and use it as the, um, the actual cup here. All right, so next up on the list is gonna be a light that has some sort of sensor on it. Now, just in general, I would recommend getting yourself these lights. I highly recommend them and I have a full video I can put up here or put below that talks basically a lot more about these, but these are extendable. You can add a motion light. You can add extra battery up here. You can dim them. You can have all four lights on, just one. These things are the best lights I've ever used at camp. The reason that this is kind of on the list right now is because it actually does have a new motion sensor for camp. I really do like these because occasionally in the middle of the night, I'll have to get up and pee and I don't wanna to have to jump down, turn on a light, use my phone, use a flashlight and then turn off the light afterwards. If I'm hopping down in the middle of the night, this will be able to sense my movement and go ahead and turn on. You can turn up the intensity, you can turn up the time, and um, yeah, you can really just kind of make this your own. Another reason I really like this is because I camp sometimes alone and I'm out there with elk, bears, all kinds of stuff. So if this senses any movement out there, this will turn on and basically alert me that something is at my camp. Now, I really do like this because on the off chance that something shows up that wants to cause me harm, I would like to be alerted beforehand so that I have time to prepare for the situation. While that is not the main function or the reason that I get this, more important for me is the ability for this to turn on if I'm just hopping down in the middle of the night or if I'm just moving around camp and I want to conserve power. 
So the next one on the list is going to be a self-contained fire pit, especially a smokeless one. Now I'm sure you all have seen Solo Stove before. That is a really great one. I do really like Solo Stove, but I personally just have one that I got on Amazon. I'll drop a link below if you want to check it out, but it is almost identical to the Solo Stove, except it has some legs that come out. It is really great for home use as well as use while you're out camping because it doesn't pack down super small, but it does kind of fold in nicely. It's also great because if you use it correctly, you don't smell like smoke, you don't get smoke everywhere, and everything is self-contained within this metal unit. So if you have to put the fire out, it's super easy, and it's a lot safer for the forest when you're using that. All right, next on the list is going to be some source of power. Now, I have two different brands here and two very different power banks. This is a 2000 watt. I believe this is somewhere around five or 600. I don't remember exactly, but it is a much smaller one. So for most people, this is probably going to be more than enough. So there are a ton of different things that you can power at camp that I would consider, for me at least, essentials. You've got heated blankets, you've got diesel heaters, you've got a fridge set up. Pretty much every single time I go camping, I bring a fridge with me. Um, there's just a lot of different things that you can bring. I think the easiest way to run any of those is going to be through a power bank. There are some things that you can run off of your car or just a little power bank. However, I would recommend at least getting yourself something of this size. So I have a ton of different ones of these. I've got a bunch of different EcoFlows, a couple different Blue Eddies. Um, I've got some other brands out there as well. When it comes to the brand, I'm not so picky. As long as it's one of the kind of higher end ones like the EcoFlow, the Blue Eddy, or the Anchor, some other ones I'm sure work great. But I will say, if you want to get a good warranty and all that, go with one of the bigger brands. So on most of these, you've got AC outlets, you've got 12 volt, you've got a place to plug in a CPAP machine, if that's something you need to bring with you, um, a place to charge your phone, you know, charge batteries, anything like that. I definitely recommend getting yourself something like this, even if it is something smaller like this EcoFlow River 2 Pro. So speaking of power, the next thing that I'm going to have on the list is going to be a fridge. Now you certainly can just bring a little cooler or something like that with you. Um, you know, something to keep a few things cool, but if you want to bring out some good food, you know, steak, chicken, stuff like that, then go ahead and get yourself a fridge. I really like the set power stuff. I have three fridges of this and I will be testing out another one here in actually a couple days. So basically this is gonna use 12 volt power. You can plug into your vehicle or into one of those little power banks. It doesn't take up a lot of power. This one here is a 35, I have a 45, and the new one I'm trying I think is a 20 or something like that. Ideally, I like having the dual zone. This one is a freezer and a fridge, or you can just make this also a fridge if you don't need the freezer. Now, I've made a ton of videos on fridges. I've probably got four or so on the channel. If you wanna hear a little bit more in depth about those, I will either drop a video up here or put the links below. Really what you need to know here is that this can go in your vehicle at all times. It hardly takes up any power and uh, you don't really need a big power bank to run this. And if you really want to, you can just run it off of your vehicle. And then when you get to camp, uh, plug it into the power bank to conserve a little bit of power. I'll drop links below to this one here. This is the PT35, I believe. And then I also have an RV45D and a new one coming out that you'll see in a video coming up soon. Now I have used coolers in the past and you certainly can do that as well. But if you are using a cooler and you're going to be uh, making chicken, please don't feed me any because I don't want to get food poisoning. That is why I like something like this because I can keep it at exactly the temperature I set it at. Um, it's not going to deviate, but maybe a degree or two from that, um, the compressor will kick on and make sure that it stays at the right temperature. Something like this for about the same price as, let's say a Yeti, is gonna be able to be powered. It's gonna keep your stuff at exactly a certain temperature and you don't have to worry about replenishing ice or anything like that. Now, for some reason, this next one is 
kind of a controversial one. It seems to really upset people that uh, people want to have rooftop tents and be comfortable while they're camping. But that is the next item on my list, and that is basically get yourself a rooftop tent. I've done cowboy camping, I've done tents, I've done rooftop tents, I've done sleeping in the bed, I've done all kinds of stuff, and by far the best way to camp is gonna be a rooftop tent, or I guess essentially a slide-in camper would be a little bit better, but uh, this is a little bit more realistic. The only reason I'm showing off the James Baroud right now is because that just happens to be the tent that I have at this moment. I'm actually switching this week to another rooftop tent. I'm gonna be testing out a bunch of different ones going forward. I've had maybe five or six on this channel, and um, they're basically my favorite way of camping. You get a mattress built in, a frame, so that it is sturdy, you're protected from critters, you're protected from the elements. Yeah, you can put all of your bedding in there, pop it up in a second, pop it back down in two, and yeah, I mean, it's just my favorite way of camping. Now, the reason I say that this isn't an essential is because a lot of these are very expensive. Um, I've had some from about $1,000 all the way up to this one here, which is, I think, $6,000. Um, they are not cheap by any means. Now, if you're someone that camps maybe once or twice a year, you don't want to spend a lot of money, then, you know, by all means, go with a hammock or a ground tent. Uh, they will do perfectly fine. You won't be as level, probably won't be as comfortable, and it won't be as easy to set up and break down. That is definitely a trade-off, and that is why this is on a list of things that make it easier and not a list of essentials. For me, a rooftop tent or you know, sleeping in the bed, something like that, something covered and on my vehicle is an absolute essential. But if you want the most comfortable sleep you've ever had outdoors, a rooftop tent is definitely something I would recommend, but by all means, a ground tent will work perfectly fine. All right, so bonus time, guys. This is not necessarily something for camping, but it is a nice way to get further out to camp and make it so that you can rest a little bit easier knowing that you're less likely to get stuck. Now, the first of which is gonna be this Sandy Cats recovery rope here. This is really great, definitely my go-to for recovery since I don't have a winch right now. I did have a winch on my Forerunner. I love having a winch. I really do like that. However, in lieu of that, we've got the Sandy Cats with the braking strength of 28,000 pounds. This is 7 8 inch by 30 feet. It packs down in this little bag here. And along with that, I also have a shackle here. I do really like this because when we are going out in the backcountry, I think a lot of people think about the camping stuff and they'll say, oh, you know what? I'm not really going too heavy off-roading, so I'll just bring my truck, bring my tent, and I'll be good. However, if you are going down even a dirt road, a forest service road, you know, something a Subaru could do, then I would consider bringing this to make your camp a little bit easier. Now, if you do any sort of off-roading that's a little bit heavier, a little bit tougher on the vehicle, this is hands down an absolute, no questions asked, essential to bring with you something like this and a shackle there's no reason to get stuck out there if you're doing any off-roading it's not that expensive so another thing that's going to make things a lot easier is going to be a four-way tire deflation and inflation kit i've had a different brand on the channel before it worked okay but it is certainly not as compact and easy to use as this one this morphlate one right here is the one i would recommend going with you basically can inflate and deflate all of your tires at the same time. So when you're airing down to go down some dirt roads, some uh, off-road trails, being able to have all four of them air up and air down at the same time is just going to make things a ton easier. Appreciate you guys stopping by and checking out the channel. Please check out the Patreon if you want some exclusive content. Subscribe below. I'll see you guys in the next one.